Welcome back to the lab. Today we need to upgrade our CR10 by installing an E3D V6 hotend. This will allow us to print higher temperature materials that can handle the temperatures inside of our custom transformer without deforming. PLA just isn't going to cut it for us anymore. Like we alluded to just now, the driving factor for this upgrade are the upcoming Project Darwin videos where we'll design and hand wind a custom transformer to boost at least 600 watts of power from 11 to 250 volts. This will cause the transformer to dissipate some power as heat in the core and the windings, and our bobbin needs to handle that heat without deforming. The reason why we can't use an off-the-shelf bobbin is because we want to leverage a split bobbin, which makes achieving isolation much easier between the primary and secondary windings. It will also allow us to make the primary windings more symmetrical, and symmetry is difficult to achieve when you start getting 60 strands of magnet wire involved in anything. Having that fixed form to wind each primary winding in will help us out a lot. Which brings us to the upgrade. The V6 hot end from E3D, it's great! It has become a standard of its own and inspired a variety of replicas and knockoffs to surge into the marketplace. Now let's print off a mount for the E3D V6 upgrade the Marlin firmware of our printer for the latest safety features, including some important thermistor failure mitigations, and then we'll get our machine running again. Now, we printed the mount brackets using PLA first, then we disassembled the old hot end, taking everything off the Y carriage, and then removing the cable management webbing. With that complete, we began installing the new hot end and prepared to splice the new hot end into the old cables. Required, of course, stripping some wire, tinning it, connecting it together, heat shrink tubing, the whole nine. Then we re replace the cable management mesh over that whole bundle to make it look a little nicer. Now with a little bit of tidying up, we're ready for the firmware upgrade. First we flash the bootloader onto the board, which allows for the USB firmware upgrades in the future. And now we can use the Arduino IDE to upload code like any other Arduino board. It requires downloading the latest Mar Marlin firmware onto your computer. I grabbed a copy with some modifications for the V6 baked in, ensured the settings were configured correctly for our hardware connections and thermistor, then uploaded that firmware onto the printer. That complete, all we need now are some test prints. We started by using the hot end to print a stronger mount out of impact resistant PETG, and just some stuff we purchased off Amazon. That'll end up being the final mount after we use this one a little bit, but not after a few more tests with the new hot end. I want to make sure it's worth printing that final mount. Then we did an extended 20 hour print. The purpose of that was to find any sort of thermal runaway or issues with heat creep due to insufficient airflow through the heat sink, or at least on the heat sinks out of the heat break.
This print turned out great, and I think that this whole setup will satisfy our needs moving forward. I noticed a bit more stringing with PETG than PLA, but I'll take that as a compromise. If I want the most beautiful prints achievable, I'll use PLA, but if strength, impact resistance, and temperature rating are more important, that's when we'll use PETG. Time for the transformer bobbin then. We swapped in the orange PETG we bought, put the printer back to work. It was capable of printing the support structure as well as the print, and separation afterwards was not an issue for me, at least not for this print. Now that our printer can handle both types of filament, we can pick the right material for the job, even if this requires higher printing temperatures. Our printer has now been upgraded to handle the PETG that our transformer bobbin requires, and we printed our first prototype bobbin. This means that we're ready to finish up designing the transformer with the split bobbin designed in. This video was great, but we're just getting started with the first build of our uninterruptible power supply. Subscribe to be notified of our future videos where we'll prepare our UPS design for automated manufacturing. We'll also design and wind our custom transformer onto the bobbin that we printed today. I think that 3D printing is a fantastic tool in the shop. It enables us to create all sorts of components that would be nearly impossible without this technology. If you think so too, let me know by hitting the like button on this video or leaving a comment letting us know what you enjoyed. Most of all, I hope that you learned something great today and I hope to see you again soon. Thanks for watching it for everyone and thank you for staying till the end. Bye.